All right, guys, welcome to engineering turn signals. Turn signals require electrical power to illuminate the turn signal light bulbs. When the turn signal lever is activated in either direction, a circuit is completed that allows power to flow to the front and rear turn signal lights on the selected side. When the signal lights are turned on, they're not illuminated constantly. They flash in a rhythmic pattern to draw the attention of other motorists and indicate your intention. When you complete your turn and turn the steering wheel back to center, a cam on the steering column catches on the turn signal level and cancels the turn signal operation. So your challenge today is to use Blockly, the code node and the code node cart to create a program that mimics how turn signals work on a vehicle. So just like in our past activities, I'm not gonna show you the code right away, but I am gonna show you what the program looks like when you've got it right. So I'm gonna draw your attention to the code node card here, and I'm gonna click start. So I have the vehicle facing away from me because I'm the driver, and you're gonna program buttons one and buttons two. When I press button one, it's gonna indicate that I wanna make a right-hand turn. When I turn my vehicle, look at that. It's disengaged the turn signal. Let's see about the other one. I click two. Excellent, make my turn, and it's disengaged. So this has three coding challenges in it. The first one, I am gonna give you some of the code to get you started. So let's get into it. All right, I am going to start a new program for you because I want you to see this from scratch. You're gonna click on sensor data and for this activity, you do not need temperature, brightness, or loudness. You do not need the magnetic field sensor. You are going to be using tilt angle X and Y, so select those two. And you're also gonna to wanna to leave button one and two here uh, open. I'm just gonna leave it this way. Don't disengage it. Make sure that it's on, but you don't have to check them. And then I'm gonna to go to the graph screen. Here you see I have a tilt angle X and a tilt angle Y, two different graphs that you're gonna utilize a little bit later. And I'm gonna click my code icon to get started. All right, so this is a basic one. Let's build it together. I am going to create a loop while true. And remember guys, you have your student activity sheets that you can access so you can get detailed instructions. You can also access this via the digital flip book. So there's a couple ways you can access this program. All right, then I'm gonna bring in two Boolean logic statements and a couple comparison blocks. All right, so remember I said we were gonna use buttons one and two. That's like if you turned your turn signal on to go to my right or the turn signal two to go turn my left. So you go to hardware for these buttons and I'm gonna pull the top one out and you can use the drop down here to find button one. So when button one is equal to one, that just means you've clicked it. You can right click or pull out new hardware, either one. This one I want for button two. And then I also wanna set this equal to one. All right, so if I click one, I want it to give me an arrow that's gonna turn to my right. So it's gonna look a little different. Remember, orientation is really important here. For this arrow, you're gonna have it face this direction. And then I'm gonna right click to duplicate it because when I click button two, I want it to go the other way. All right, let's see how I did. I'm gonna click start, click the button, perfect. Click the other one, there I go. Pretty basic, right? So here's where your challenges start. Remember when we learned about turn signals initially, 
they flash or blink intermittently. So you're getting the attention of the driver behind you or the driver in front of you that's seeing you in the rear view mirror. It lets them know, it indicates what direction you wanna turn. So your goal now is to take this initial program we worked together and add to it so your arrows flash one, two, three, four, five times. So when I click one, I want this arrow to flash five times and then stop and same for two. Once I click that, flash five times and then stop. All right, good luck with your coding challenge. Pause the video, go for it. All right guys, welcome back. Uh, I'm gonna give you a sample of how I completed it so you can compare with what you came up with. So I can keep a lot of my initial stuff here, but I'm gonna pull these out just for a second. I wanna keep this frame the same, but now I'm gonna pull in a couple repeat loops. Remember I said I wanted it to flash five times, so I'm gonna repeat five times. Duplicate that and pull that in here. So then you can pull this back and pull this one back. Well, we have to let the program know a flash, you show the arrow and then you don't show the arrow. So I'm gonna leave my first one. I'm gonna add a timer in here, a little sleep block. And let's do it for about 500 milliseconds. Okay. And then rather than duplicating, since I want it to be just blank, I'm gonna pull it from hardware. So you see what I did there? So when I click button one, it will flash five times these arrows back and forth. And then you wanna do the same thing here. Pull in a sleep timer again, and then a clean LED array in between. All right, so this is what your program may look like. This is what mine looks like. Let's see how it functions. All right, I'm gonna click start. Arrow, one, two, three, four, five, and the other way. Okay, success. That was challenge two. Challenge three now, remember, after someone turns, makes that turn, it disengages the turn signal. So when I turn this way, it should stop the arrow when I turn the other way. So how do we do that? Remember when we initially started, I had you check off uh, tilt X and tilt Y. Let me show you why that's important. I'm gonna click on my code icon here. Don't mind this data, we're gonna start a new one. So when I click start, I'm gonna tilt my vehicle to the right and to my left. After I do that a few times, then I'm gonna tilt it forward and backward. And I want you to pay attention to the way X and Y tilt looks. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna click start. And now I'm gonna tilt to the right and to the left. Notice what my data looks like for the X. It goes into positive and then negative integers. Nice. All right, then I'm gonna stop for a second and now rock it back and forth this way to the front and to the back. So you see how tilt Y is registered when you're going this way. So here's your third and final challenge. You're gonna utilize this data in a final program. Think about it. I want you to add to the program you just finished and make it disengage the turn signal when you turn your vehicle to the right or to the left. This one might take a little extra time, so now that you know what to do, pause the video and give it a shot. Okay, welcome back. I'm sure you did great. Uh, so I'm gonna show you a sample of how I made my program work for me. So look at the data bars again here, our two graphs. And I'm going to utilize tilt, tilt X because that, that data registered really well when I turned left and right. So I'm going to use tilt X in my program. I'm going to go back to the code and you're going to be able to keep a lot of this, but 
I'm going to pull these out because my my flashers no longer need to blink exactly five times. I want them to illuminate until I tilt or turn my vehicle to disengage. So now I'm going to pull in two repeat until's. I change these both until and bring in a couple comparison blocks. I can duplicate that. And I'm going to click hardware and pull in this first one. But I am going to use the drop down to bring to tilt X. Duplicate and do the same here. So let's go back to the data real quick. And I want you to see the peaks. So I'm seeing these peaks here, probably halfway between 20 and 40. So that puts me in the 30 zone. Uh, so I like the number 30. I'm going to use a positive 30 and a negative 30 to indicate when the program needs to disengage or turn off that turn signal. So back to code and pull in a couple math blocks. And this was the tricky part, which might have posed a challenge when you were debugging your programs. So when I tilt one way, if it's greater than 30, it'll disengage the light at this point. Here though, if it's less than, remember these were negative integers once we got below zero, I want to put negative 30. Then I'm going to pull these out and utilize them in my code. And again, this is just my example. You might have done things a little bit differently and that's perfectly fine. All right, so let me run through and check my program. While true, if I click button one, my arrow is going to go on until I tilt one way and same with button two. All right, how do you think I did? Really only one way to find out. I'm going to click start and press button one. Excellent, my arrow is flashing. The only way to disengage it is to make my turn. Excellent, it worked. Now let's do button two. Tilt the other way and it's disengaged. So we had a successful program. Hopefully you did as well. Thanks for joining.